So Jim Edwards here standing alongside Fight Disciples podcast Nick Pete ahead of UFC 228 is going to go down tomorrow evening at the American Airlines Arena in Dallas, Texas. Uh, Nick, we're standing here in the very hot, humid weather in Dallas, but we've just witnessed the weigh-ins. We've just seen Darren Till hitting 169 pounds on the scales this morning. Um, tell me, what did you think of Darren this morning? How do you think he looked? And uh, you've been around him a lot this week. Like, what have you made of him? Uh, I thought he looked sensational today. It was no surprise that he was one of the first in the queue to be weighed in this morning. Uh, we knew late last night that he was back from the gym pretty early. He was back in his bed before 10 p.m. So that was kind of against everything that we were prepared him for. We thought it was going to be a tough cut, but seemingly it was a, a pretty easy cut. And today, I think getting on the on the scales in his underwear and making 169 that that was like the ultimate statement. That that's like a, you know it, it hasn't been as tough as everybody imagined it was going to be and you know what maybe his future is at well to wait a little bit longer than we than we kind of thought yesterday yeah i think like when you look back at his preparations the fact that he's gone to the ufc performance institute he's had that prof that professional chef for the first time yeah um just looking at him today and being with him during fight week we've kind of seen the fact that he has looked better he has been in a better mood um it's not easy obviously making 170 but from what we've seen this week i have been i have been impressed especially on the scales this morning the the kind of uh the double flipping of the birds as well. I think it was yeah. a big statement out to everyone. Uh, wh where do you kind of think his kind of frame of mind is going to be now that he's made the weight and he's what, 24 hours away now from fight night? Yeah, I, th I think his mind frame's been absolutely locked in all week. You know, he's been so um, on it. That's the best way to describe him. He's been so focused, the entire camp. You know, you speak to everybody that was in Las Vegas with him. They say he's been so accurate. He's never looked as sharp. He's never been as focused. You know, he's here to do a job and you feel like that hasn't started when he arrived in Dallas. That started when he arrived mm. in Las Vegas. He's zero focused in on this job in hand, and I can see nothing but a, a, you know a, a victory for Darren Till now. I, I fancied them prior to, to coming out here to the US, but after being around them for the few days, I, I've never seen him this focused before. Let's let's switch back to Liverpool when he fought mm. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, and obviously the weight issue was distracting him then. But he looked tired. He looked a lot more gaunt. You Everything know. went wrong, didn't it? It did. Yeah, yeah, there was there was no sparkle behind his eyes. Where you know this week, literally stepped off the scales a couple of hours ago, and I met him out in the foyer as he was on his way back to his room, and you know the the, the smile was cracking across his face, and he was kind of like. He just seems like he's in such a happy place right now, and a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. Yeah, for sure. One man who hasn't been happy all week has been Tyron Woodley. He's um, been very short with everyone. He's been uh, not, I guess, the media's best friend not like this Tyron, week. is he? Uh, yeah, what can I say? I mean, like, what did you make of him this morning? He came in, um, it, first they read his weight at 171 pounds, so they then had to get the towel. Uh, he did eventually make 170 pounds. Maybe there was a bit of confusion with the guy already out on the scale, which we'll talk yeah. about in a minute. Um, but what did you make of Tyron, just the way he physically came into the room this morning? Um, I think he looked a little bit sheepish. I think Din Thomas's behaviour, which is obviously yeah. Tyron's coach, his behaviour when Darren was getting onto the scales, he was desperate to get in front of those scales. He was desperate to check they were being read right. You know, he was he was kind of cl crawling across the stage almost at one point to stay out of the way of everyone's camera shot. He was that keen. And then I think when they read out 169, I think Din Thomas kind of, you seen his shoulders drop and, uh, and Tyron was kind of stomping around in the back room. They I truly believe they thought Till was really going to struggle to make weight. They expected mm. him to visit the scales a couple of times and to see him weighing a pound under as I say in his underpants and look that fresh you know I think media day yesterday was a big indicator of where Till's at as well you know everyone was eating out the palm of yeah. his hands he was answering everybody's questions he really intelligently well. <laughs> he was eating a bowl of fruit you know it sounds crazy but those small things must have been pecking away at Tyron and we've seen that today when he got on the scales he, he was fuming when they read out 171 clearly that was a mistake mm. um, but to finally hit 170, just when they left the room, the dynamic didn't seem right. He does not look like a happy man right now. And you can kind of understand why. It feels like it's going to go one of two ways. He, he feels like everyone's against him, the, the world's against him. He kind of but maybe that. he kind of does like that though. Maybe yeah. this is what's going to fire him up for that fight tomorrow night. Um, you know, what can I say? Uh, there has to be one final question on this. Like, how does it end, do you think? It ends, honestly, in sensational fashion. Yeah, funnily enough, Tyron yesterday was talking about the Robbie Lawler fight and his own kind of predicament. And I asked him if he, you know, sees a lot in Darren Till uh, of himself. And he, and he drew comparisons to that fight. He said, yeah, it, he reminds me of me approaching Robbie Lawler. And I think that's going to be 100% accurate. I think Darren Till is going to do to Tyron Woodley what Tyron Woodley did to Robbie Lawler. Stop him in sensational fashion with a big clean knockout. Yeah, and obviously that's the main event tomorrow. We've got to say something about the co-main event, which has just unfortunately fallen out. We 
know that Nika Montagna was transported to hospital here this morning in Dallas, Texas. Her fight with Valentina Shevchenko is no longer taking place. Um, Nick, like again, you've been here all week. We've been in and around Nico. Uh, Valentina was saying that she'd never thought this fight was going to take place, and yeah. she got she got proven correct this morning. Like, what, what are kind of your thoughts on what's happened this morning? I guess in in relation to that fight being called off. Devastating, really. Obviously, first and foremost, we hope that Nico is going to be healthy and going to be fine. She is. I don't know whether she's back from hospital yet, but I am aware that she went to hospital last night as well mm. for a checkup. She was allowed to come back. She was allowed to carry on her weight cut, but ultimately, uh, doctors have ruled her uh, unfit to do so. Massively disappointing for her. Obviously, you know she's had such a bad time since she became champion you know yeah. against all the odds she just had no luck whatsoever but also you've got to think about Valentina this is not the first time she's seen a world title fight drop off at this stage mm. you know the same thing happened to her last year so you've got to feel for her also and from a fan's perspective you know, I'm a massive Valentina Shevchenko fan I was so looking forward to seeing her fighting tomorrow you know we, we put our cards on the table yesterday Jim and said you know we yeah. absolutely thought she was going to become the new flyweight champion it must be frustrating for her as mm. well to do all that work to actually physically make weight and now to not even have a, a fight at all on the card. Yeah, it's very difficult when when Nika goes from here. We were saying yesterday we didn't think there was any kind of path to victory for her. And uh, now, like you were saying, she's had a very terrible like nine months where just nothing seems to have gone right for her. People are asking about the status of a UFC contract. I think she's safe in that sense. But whether she holds on to the title, um, is, do you think she will do, or do you think they'll strip her? No, I, I think well, a lot will depend on what comes back from the doctor's appointment today, you know, and, and what she comes back to the hotel with. Maybe they can move it for a couple of weeks' time. Move it. To another big event uh, obviously Valentina she's done everything she can so she certainly deserves it to fight for the title and you know if Nico's not fit and not healthy then maybe they they put Valentina in with somebody else in a few weeks time and then they meet Nico number one contender when she returns just lastly I guess what else is kind of sticking out to you on this car we've got a few other Brits we've got Darren the dentist Stuart yeah um, we've also got uh, Craig White as well like what else to you is uh, gonna going to surprise us perhaps maybe on Saturday. I think Craig White against Diego Sanchez, that's just going to be absolutely bonkers. I think Craig literally, he couldn't have dreamt of a better fight for himself in a second fight in the UFC. Obviously brought out here to Dallas for a pay-per-view event and he gets the reward that is a legend in Diego Sanchez that only knows one way to fight and anyone that's seen him, seen the uh, seen the Thundercat fight on Cage Warriors knows he loves a brawl. He does. And uh, I, I think that's got all the ingredients to be a, an absolute bomb burner. In regard to the dentist, obviously Darren just needs to land that shot. If he lands the shot, he can score a sensational knockout. If he doesn't, it, it could be a tough three rounds for him. But you know what? He deserves it as well. After his performance in Liverpool, and we've seen tears and of joy. We know how much he, he wants to be in the UFC, how passionate he is. Yep. If we see a big performance from t tomorrow night, it'll be uh, it'll be just rewards for him as well. Yeah, just lastly from me, one, one uh, fight I'm looking forward to. I think it might actually be bumped up to the co-main event now. That's not confirmed, but Karolina Kovalkiewicz versus Jessica Andrade. Yes. Number one contender fight, UFC strawweight division. Um, I'm really kind of looking forward to seeing these two uh, share the cage. I think, there's, uh, I think it's gonna be determined in the clinch. We know Andrade likes to kind of push the pressure, force her opponents up against the cage and get in that clinch, but that's where Carolina makes her money. Yep. Those elbows, those knees to the body. It, that's that's going to be the turning point of the fight. Who wins that kind of battle? And it's um, it's going to be a big fight tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. I think Carolina's the most unused uh, potential superstar in Europe at the moment. I think she's you know she's got all the ingredients to be you know, an absolute darling, an absolute sweetheart for, for the European fans. And I think a big performance here on Saturday would unlock that. But it's going to be tight. It's going to be tough because Andre, as you say, she's a girl that loves it in the trenches, you know, and she's going to make it really hard for Carolina. But I'm really looking forward to that fight. I think it's going to be massively explosive. And obviously, the other one I'm looking forward to is Zibit oh. Magomed Sharapov. Yeah. I cannot wait to see this guy fight. He looks like the most unassuming <laughs> guy on the UFC roster, yet he's arguably the most talented. Easily. Yeah, no, easily. Tomorrow, it's, uh, I think everyone's looking forward to seeing what he does against Brandon Davis. Of course, though, the main event tomorrow, Gosh. Darren Till, Tyron Woodley. This is yep. the big one. Um, just lastly, let's end on this. Do you? Is this the way it kind of felt? I'm, you've known Darren for so long. You you trained at Carbon back in the day. Yeah. Like, is this the kind of trajectory and the path you saw him going onto the title? Does this feel right that we're here in Dallas and this is the time to go and claim that world title? Yeah, it absolutely does. You know, and um, I, that was one thing I was unsure about before jetting out. But now I'm here and I've been around the team and seen him and. You know, his, his 
heavily pregnant girlfriend Laura and everything else it, it just feels right it just feels like the moment is right it feels like the Darren Till show we've been saying this mm. for the last couple of days it doesn't feel like the Tyron Woodley show it feels like Darren Till's coming out party and what's going to be special for me is it may not happen on Sunday or Monday but eventually when that UFC belt comes back to the UK what that's going to do for UK MMA it, it, it's kind of unmeasurable at this moment because we've never seen it before Jim no. Michael Bisping became the first British UFC champion of course he did but the belt never came back to the UK it's California the belt went to California <laughs> it never, never lived in the UK neither did Bisping so to have Till on British shores with the belt on home soil and being able to do the, the European kind of media engagements and really grow this brand in Europe I, I think it, it could be the next real step forward in mixed martial arts and its growth in Europe and in the UK of course certainly will be tough task tomorrow with Tyron Woodley but it goes down in the main event thankfully We've seen everyone just weigh in. It's official, it's happening. It's happening at the American Airlines Arena here in Dallas, Texas. I can't wait. Nick, thanks for joining me today and um, I'll see you tomorrow evening.